Welcome fans. I know I don't normally do Walking Dead reviews, but as you know, The Walking Dead is my absolute favorite show. And when I saw the season six finale, I had to weigh in with my opinion in the form of a video. Now, unlike other fans, I wasn't necessarily angry at the finale. I just didn't like the ending. That was it. But I saw Robert Kirkman on the Talking Dead couch after the show, and he gave his reason why the season ended the way it did. And then the question hit me, as I'm sure it did you guys as well. Did Kirkman just fuck his fans for ratings? So here's my compelling evidence to show why fans have every fucking reason to be pissed off at the season finale of The Walking Dead, but we were not fucked. At least I, I hope we weren't. So here we go. Let's start with a spoiler warning, guys. If you haven't seen season six of The Walking Dead, the uh, finale, or any of the show, don't watch this video. Real quick, I want to give a shout out to Chris Hardwick, my bro. I saw you online answering fan questions after The Talking Dead. <laughs> As Negan would say, you took it like a fucking champ. <laughs> Those fans were fucking hella pissed. <laughs> You did well, bro. Did well. All right, guys, let's start about, uh, let's talk about the first reason why fans have every right to be pissed. The cliffhanger. Guys, when the governor stormed the prison and killed Herschel, that episode was not split into two. And you know the why that is. It would have made the, it wouldn't have made sense. It would have torn the scene apart and ruined the emotion. Now, please don't get me wrong. The Walking Dead writers definitely use cliffhangers. But in my experience, I've noticed that they only use them in the mid-season finales. Like when Sam uh, called out for his mom when they were leaving the house and all the walkers were around. They don't actually use cliffhangers in the season finale. Now, they're too busy, usually in the second half of a season, setting us up for the next season to actually use a cliffhanger. They, they don't need to. Their story is so good people will tune in to the next season regardless if there was a cliffhanger. So the show does not normally use season finale cliffhangers. This is very important, guys. Mostly they use mid-season finales. So I understand your shock when you saw this finale. This is not within the Walking Dead formula. And, you know, for those of you out there who are going to tell me that it worked for Game of Thrones and Jon Snow's death, <laughs> well, you can help yourself to a cup of your fucking theory is invalid. <laughs> From what I read, the press has already fucking spoiled that for the fans, and the fucking season hasn't even premiered yet. I don't want this to happen to my fucking beloved Walking Dead. Every fucking fanboy and fangirl is going to have seven months to analyze who fucking Negan killed. Someone out there is going to figure it out and fuck it up for the rest of us before season seven premieres. You know it and I know it. And so maybe I guess that's why we're all pissed about the cliffhanger. So last thing I will say about the cliffhanger, because I want to be just done with that. I thought Rick and the, uh, and the survivors pissed Negan off so much that Negan would t would kill two of Ru uh, Rick's people. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. One person at the end of the finale would be killed, and then a second person would be in a cliffhanger killing. A lot of people thought Negan would kill two of Rick's people. One in the finale, one would be a cliffhanger. I honestly thought that's how it would go, but, you know, it didn't. I think that's also why fans were so pissed off. We didn't think Kirkman would just cliffhanger us. Uh, you know, like he had more respect for us than to do something like that. It, it makes it makes us think that Kirkman wrote the episode just to please the networks and get ratings rather than make the fans happy. Uh, but, you know, guys, I honestly don't think that's true. From what I've heard... Kirkman has approval control over the Walking Dead television series. AMC basically caters to him like he's some fucking god. So you 
You might ask yourself if AMC suddenly turned into a hot, busty blonde and Kirkman sold out his fans so AMC would fuck him. <laughs> the answer is no. Kirkman is the hot, busty blonde that AMC wants to fuck. <laughs> Just remember that, guys. Now, please remember, fans, I'm a writer, and I have a trilogy with cliffhangers. I may not be at the kind of caliber that Robert Kirkman is, but I fucking know cliffhangers. And I have to be honest, I would not have wrote the season finale in two parts as Kirkman did. So, Chris Hardwick, your theory is fucking invalid. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw uh, Hardwick's little rant on uh, online after after the the Talking Dead, and he said that every literary uh, person out there would agree with Kirkman, and I don't. Uh, Kirkman claimed on the Talking Dead that the death of a character would overshadow Negan's arrival, but I gotta say I don't see eye to eye with Kirkman on that. Glenn's death was I. Uh, <laughs> In the comic, it did not overshadow Negan's arrival. So why would they think it would be a good idea to cut the finale in half? It's like Negan's arrival and a death of our beloved character go hand in hand, not in two separate episodes. Um, oh, and by the way, Robert Kirkman, if you're watching this video, hit me up, buddy. I will make the perfect addition to your writing team. Read my books. Check me out. Hire me. I work for free. I've always got a script ready for you, buddy. And I guess, you know, I can laugh about that because Kirkman doesn't need my help. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get a fucking phone call from him, but it's just because he needs a bitch to run his errands. <laughs> I'll take that job, too. All right. Now, another reason fans have a right to be pissed, and even I am a little miffed at this, is the introduction of Negan. Number one... His actual introduction to the storyline was too fucking fast. The wolves were so built up, starting from the second half of season five, and we waited for the wolves to come at our Alexandrians. I mean, that was so fucking tense for the audience. We were fucking scared for them. But after the wolves attacked, it was like, and now they're gone. Really? Fucking really? That was fucking it for the wolves? I really hoped we would get to see much more of them, especially their fucking society. Then, after we're supposed to just magically forget about the disappearance of the wolves that were so fucking built up, we didn't get a fucking chance to breathe after the walkers invaded Alexandria before the saviors showed up. I honestly fucking thought the saviors would be a storyline built up in the last half of season 6 to be explored in season 7. But we're already there. It seems like it happened way too fast. Why did we get the appearance of Negan so quickly? Uh, they could have they could have expanded the storyline on the wolves, and then done everything with Alexandria and the the walkers breaking in, and then here we go. We see the saviors afterwards, in season finale. Uh, I wish that they would have done that because everything else kind of seems like it happened way too fast in this season. And by the way, guys, does anybody know why didn't the show give poor Jeffrey Dean Morgan time to, like, kind of bulk up a little bit and shave his face so he could actually look like Negan? I mean, Jeffrey Dean Morgan is a beautiful man, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, but the character of Negan, if you're going to play someone and you're an actor, you do want to kind of look like them. I don't understand why he didn't shave his face or why he didn't bulk up with the protein bars. Maybe he has um, another job that he's doing right now. I, I didn't Google that before I came on here. But the whole storyline, in my opinion, did seem a little forced. Uh, Negan gave this long, fucking winded monologue, which I hoped he would shut the fuck up at one point. And then at one point he sounded like a happy little pussy while he was doing it. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess actually that was kind of funny. <laughs> But people, when I read issue number 100, which was Negan's first appearance, my hands were fucking shaking afterwards. I thought I was going to fucking shit my pants. I cried buckets of tears while I looked for reputable therapists to help me get over my loss of Glenn. I expected to get at least one of those emotions during the television finale. 
but I didn't, you know? And, and what the fuck was with Negan threatening Maggie with Lucille? Comic Negan would never fucking do that. Huge character discrepancy that went way too fucking far. Now, guys, another reason that fans have a, a, a good reason to be pissed off at um, the show, no one died this season. Now, I know essentially that is a good thing, but if you really think about it, there hasn't been a major character death since Noah and Tyrese. And I cried more for Tyrese than I did Noah. However, Noah's death is more replaying in my nightmares every night more than obviously Tyrese's. <laughs> but the only humans that actually died in season six were Alexandrians and Wolf's you know, the extras. I mean, it sucked Denise died, but I fucking cried my eyes out when Tyrese died. I still have fucking nightmares about Noah's death, and this is the formula that The Walking Dead follows. Shocking deaths. And it completely deviated from the formula in season six, resulting in great fucking episodes, but the fans, it, it pissed them off. One of the things The Walking Dead does perfectly is create new characters for us to love and identify with. So I'm sure we'll either see some new characters or maybe some people from the comics. Um, but I do have faith that they're going to continue making characters that we love. And hopefully they will... Con I, like I said, I know it's a good thing they don't kill off our beloved characters. But that is their formula. They need to stick with it. I wanted more wolves. I just wish that there were some things that they would have stuck with. Real quick, guys. There's one thing I don't want you to forget. The Walking Dead is Robert Kirkman's baby. I mean, this is his life, his life's work. And I really don't think that he would fuck us in the finale just to get ratings for his season. The man is already so fucking successful with his comics and all of his other endeavors. I really don't think... He did that for ratings. I really, truly believe in my heart that he did that because he truly felt that that's what needed to be done for the story. We may not agree with it, but it's his fucking story to tell. And we have to get fucking used to it and understand that that's what it is. Uh, so please let me know what you guys think about it in your comments below. Um, you know, I just want to hear what you think. Did you feel cheated? Did you feel fucked? Did you feel like everything was great? Were you happy? Let me know what you think in the comments below. In conclusion, fans, yes, I was disappointed in the Walking Dead finale, but only the finale. And I know you guys are pretty fucking pissed, but you can't forget this season was still fucking great. We have enough dumpster and Nicholas jokes for it to never get old. And I think this was the best fucking season yet. The apocalypse, my friends, has not happened. Robert Kirkman has not sold out for ratings, and neither have I. <laughs> I do trust Kirkman, and you should too. Remember, he's given us the mecca of kick-ass comics, and six seasons of the best fucking television show in history. We should totally fucking trust him on this one. Honestly, I I'm not excited for season seven anymore because of the cliffhanger, uh, the show I'm anticipating most now is Ash vs. Evil Dead Season 2. And I know Sam Raimi will not let me down. I mean, after all, he made Superman 3, which I totally haven't seen yet, but I'm super psyched to watch it tonight. So that's it for the video, guys. Uh, hit the like button if you like the video. Uh, press the go fuck yourself button for a dislike. And don't forget, um, I am not going to do another Walking Dead video. <laughs> I review Ash vs. Evil Dead and American Horror Story only. So check out my channel and watch my shit if you want. Please check out Trev's Chan 2 if you want fucking awesome Walking Dead reviews, character analysis, storyline breakdown, comic reviews, all that shit. Trev's Chan has got it. Um, in, the word, in the words of... One pissed off Walking Dead fan, I K A M T S 2. Roses are red, violets are blue, A M C fucked both me and you. <laughs> but Kirkman, seriously, pick up your skirt, grab your fucking balls, and fucking bring it next season. I know you will fucking do it. I know you will. And I just want to say good luck. We're all counting on you. Thanks for watching, fans. 
Take it fucking easy.